Okay, in problem 17, it's saying if the limit of the arc sine of A plus H minus arc sine of A over H is equal to two, as you know, as H goes to zero, which of these could be the value of A? So the key here is to recognize is this is just a formal definition of a derivative. If you remember from like maybe chapter one or chapter two, um, where you first were finding derivatives by like taking limits and having to, having to do some like long, tedious calculation, um, you can see that this is essentially what that is. So you're basically just trying to find the derivative of the arc sine of A. Now remember A is just, you know, a, a, a value. It's, it's just a value like just like X is. So I'm just gonna put, you know, X here just so it looks a little more familiar, but um, I wanna first write just a formal um, or just a, the derivative of the derivative of the arc sine of X, or you can look at this as the inverse sine of X. Um, these are one of those that you might just have to memorize because it's, this one and the inverse tangent are common, or yeah, pretty much inverse tangent and the arc sine are gonna be the ones you wanna memorize on your, on your AP test. Anyways, so this will just be one over the square root of one minus X squared. Now, since we're saying which of these would satisfy it being equal to two, you're gonna just set this equal to two and just solve for X. Your x is just the a, so we, it's, it's just basically setting two equal to one over the square root of one minus x squared. Solve this just using algebra, multiply both sides by the square root of that, and then divide by two, so you're gonna get the square root of one minus x squared is equal to one half, cross multiply, then you um, square both sides to undo this. So you're gonna get one minus X squared is equal to one fourth. Add X squared, take away one fourth, and you're gonna get three fourths is X squared. And then you'll get that X is just the, let me go back up here, kind of went off track. X is just the square root of three fourths which is just root three over two. So your answer will be B. All right, 18, if the natural log of two X plus Y equals X plus one, then dy dx is. Okay, so that we just basically have to do um, differentiation with a little bit of implicit differentiation because you got your y in there. So um, we're gonna take the derivative of the left side. And when you take the derivative of the natural log function, you're basically gonna do the derivative of the inside over the inside. So let's just do the derivative of two x, which is two plus the derivative of y, which is just one. And then since we're using implicit differentiation, it'll be plus one dy dx over that, whatever that is. And that'll be equal to the derivative of the right, which will just be one. And now we just essentially solve this for dy dx. Multiply both sides by this, we'll get two plus dy dx is equal to two x plus y. Take away two, we'll get dy dx is two x plus y minus two. So your answer will be b. Right, number 19. Okay, it's just the figure above shows the graph of the function of g and the line tangent to the graph of g at x equals negative one. Let h be the function given by h of x equals e to the x times g of x. What is the 
value of h prime of negative one. Okay, so let's just, let's just differentiate this. So we're gonna take the derivative of h of x, which will be h prime of x. Taking this derivative, we take the derivative of e to the x, which is just e to the x, times g to the x. This is gonna be product rule. So now we're gonna add that to e to the x times the derivative of g of x, which so times g prime of x. Okay, now if we're gonna try to find h prime of negative one, we're gonna have h prime of negative one will be equal to e to the negative one times g, g of negative one plus e to the negative one times g prime of negative one. Then we just basically have to evaluate this. So we have to find out what g of negative one is. So we have e to negative one. G of negative one, we'll just look at this graph where negative one is. You can see G of negative one is just three. So e to the negative one times three plus e to the negative one times G prime of negative one. So remember, g prime of negative one is just the derivative at negative one or just the slope of the tangent line. So we just look at the slope of this line, which you can calculate to be negative, negative six. So you're gonna go up from three all the way down negative three and over one. So it'll be negative six. And then we just, let me just, this is gonna be our answer. Let's, let's just clean this up a little bit. So that we'll have h prime of negative one will be e to the negative one, three minus six. So this will be negative three e to the negative one, negative three times e to the negative one or negative three over e. And so your answer will be b. All right, number 20. All right, so for x bigger than zero, the derivative of the integral from zero to two x of the natural log of t cubed plus one dt is, okay, this is where we're gonna use the second fundamental theorem of calculus. Now, um, we first get, let me first get some water. All right. Um, now, if you remember like, if, if it was just integrating from zero to, to x, the second fundamental theorem of calculus makes the calculation very easy. If, again, if this was just from zero to x, this would just be the natural log of x cubed plus one. That would literally be your answer. That would be, that would be all that, that would, that would be it. Now, since it's zero to the two, since it's integrating from zero to two x instead of just zero to x, all you really have to do is multiply this by the derivative of 2x. So you just sub 2x into t and then multiply by the derivative of 2x. So again, we just have the natural log. Instead of t, we put 2x cubed plus one. And this whole thing will be multiplied by the derivative of 2x. The derivative of 2x is just two. And this is literally, literally gonna be your answer. You're just gonna have two times the natural log of two cubed, which is eight, x cubed plus one. And that'll be your answer. And then your answer so then will be d. Or 21. Okay, the graph of the function f is shown above. What is the value of the integral from zero to seven to f of x? Okay, so here we, we're gonna, um, basically you gotta find the area underneath, underneath this graph. Because remember the integral geometrically represents the area between the curve and um, the line x, the x-axis. 
except for that it treats area above as positive and area below as a negative quantity. So let's just break this up geometrically into rectangles and triangles. So this is gonna work out nicely. Oh yeah, all you gotta do is calculate the areas of these guys. Okay, so here we got you know a rectangle of area two. It's two up, two or two wide, one up. A triangle, half of that area will be one. Here we got a square, two by two, four. Here we got a triangle, one by two, just half of that, one. And then down here, and oh, whoops, I wrote Ooh, my bad. I did this. Well, it's actually going to be the same thing, but um, I don't want to. We're looking at the area actually on this side, the area between that. And so we got basically a triangle. So we got a triangle um, two by two again. So half of a triangle, except since it's below the x-axis, it's going to be an instead of it being um, you know, positive two it'll be negative two. So that so then what you do is just add all these up. So it'll be two plus one plus four plus one minus two. And then your answer will just be six.